Hello again, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Um, so this uh, next little section is going to be about um, urine diversion tools. Um, so, you know, kind of nominally all about um, things that people are, are developing to uh, help us, um, you know, help us uh, collect process um, and and uh, apply urine. So uh, our first presenters are going to be Christian Kopp and Mark Richterich, uh, who'll be uh, presenting some updates from uh, Laufen. And Christian is the sustainability manager for Laufen and a member of the sustainability committee of its parent organization, the Roca Group, since its inception. In her role, Christian helped define the strategy for Roca Group's sustainability roadmap and led projects that advanced the company towards its environmental and social goals while helping to establish Laufen as a leading brand for sustainable innovation. Welcome, Christian and Mark, and uh, you can share your screen and take it away. Thank you very much. Um, I hope everyone can hear me well. Um, my colleague Mark just joined us literally just now. Hi, Mark. Um, let me try and share my screen just a moment, please. Mark, are you okay to start? Uh, yes, I'm okay to start. Can you hear me properly? Yep. Yes, we can hear so, you. So, thank you very much for the introduction and for the possibility to present. Uh, first, a few words about Laufen for those who, is, who are not familiar with uh, our brand. We are a bathroom manufacturer based in Laufen, Switzerland, and we're producing all kinds of products for the bathroom from the faucets over furniture to the toilets. And um, we recognize as a multinational brand. So if you can go to the next slide. We're having 34 subsidiaries and we're present in over 120 countries which gives us a uh, worldwide spread. The production plants are all in Europe which are meanwhile nine plants, predominantly in Switzerland, Austria, Czech Republic, and uh, Poland. And I think this is enough for the company. Everybody's interested will find us or find us in any of the countries that you're in, including North America. So we're gonna switch to the main topic of today, which is our urine separation toilet called SAFE, and which Christiane will introduce you to. Thanks, Mark. Um, so for SAFE, um, for this uh, urine separation toilet, um, I think from the very onset, um, when we started developing SAFE, the main goal was to create a separation toilet that um, A, efficiently separated urine from the rest of the waste portion, and B, ensured the highest standards of hygiene and of comfort for the users. And since we were going to launch this toilet in Europe first, where our biggest, biggest markets are, that meant that it also had to be a wall hung toilet and with a rimless bowl, since this is more and more becoming the standard over here. So to achieve that, the designers from EOS Next came up with this ingenious idea of installing a little diversion channel just under the bowl inside of the toilet pan. The position, of this diverting channel and the exact curvature of, of the opening into this channel has been meticulously calculated so that the, the urine flow adheres to the ceramic in this curvature of this opening. And so it gets diverted passively into a separate little siphon, which we refer to as the urine trap. Um, and, and in this way, there is no need for any mechanical or any electronic components. Now, the genius of this idea lies in its Simplicity, really. Just like if you imagine a, a teapot, when you slowly start pouring the tea and the tea runs down the spout instead of pouring into the cup, that in its essence is the principle behind the design of this diversion channel. Here in this animation, you can see a bit better how the separation occurs inside of the toilet pan. Um, you will see in a minute. Um, yellow arrows, um, they represent how the urine flows through the opening in the ceramic channel and fall into, falls into the separate urine trap, which then of course leads to a separate pipe behind the wall that 
directs the diverted urine to um, a collection tank somewhere else in the building. The blue arrows represent um, the flush water that then rinses the whole bowl and towards the end, when um, towards the end of the flush cycle, when the amount and the speed of the water has been reduced enough, some of this flush water then also gets diverted through the channel, it rinses the urine trap and it also forms a water seal that then prevents any odors from, from coming back up. Now we know that for the, 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 the treatment, the recycling process of urine afterwards, the more water there is diluting the urine, the harder essentially is for the treatment part or that it requires more energy to then eliminate that excess water again. But from a user perspective, we needed there to be as little change to user behavior as possible in order to increase the acceptance of this toilet. We didn't, we didn't launch safe, we didn't develop this product for it to be forever a, a niche product. We launched it with the vision that one day urine separation becomes the norm, that it becomes the new standard. So we want to see safe in residential developments, in hotels, in office buildings, and we felt that the acceptance just wouldn't be there at this stage if, if the toilet couldn't be rinsed, if it couldn't be flushed as normal, if it couldn't be used like any other toilet that most people are used to. So as I said before, um, SAVE was primarily in this first phase developed for the European market. So it complies with the European norm 977, which stipulates a dual flushing of 4.5 liters for the big flush and three liters for the small flush. And it's also been tested to flush efficiently with four liters for the big flush and only as little as two and a half liters for the small flush. On average, approximately 80% of, of the urine is diverted in this toilet pan. And, and the ratio of urine to flush water in the diverted channel lies between 50 to 70, uh, 75% of urine to about 25 to 50% flush water that's per, per use or per, per flush cycle. And as, as a reference for you, uh, a four liter flush will rinse the, the little urine trap with something like 160 milliliters of water. Um, from a communications perspective, um, it became quite clear to us from, from very early on that in order to promote SAFE, we would have to raise awareness among our customers of the, the, the whole range of topics that are related to urine separation and its, its recycling, its valorization. Um, and, and, and just for you to understand that when we talk about customers, there are different groups that we address. Uh, so this could be end consumers, um, homeowners, this could be uh, installers, plumbers, property developers, um, hotel groups, architects, and also interior designers. So we thought that sparking the interest of industry specific media was one of the strategies that we could adopt to reach as wide an audience as possible. So through a series of press releases, we then attracted the attention of some important design and, and architecture magazines, such as Frame and, and Wallpaper, for example. And SAFE has also been awarded some um, prominent prizes, such as the German um, Eco Design Award in 2019 and the Design Prize at Switzerland in 2021. And, and, and obviously, every time SAFE gets any sort of recognition, the whole topic of, of urine separation gets attention as well. And when we talk about SAVE, we talk about um, a, a whole new way of managing wastewater, of managing sanitation. We're talking about a systems change, really, about intentionally redesigning every element of, of that system. And, and SAVE is only, uh, or any other separation toilet for, for that matter, actually, is, is one part of this system. So another strategy that we adopted was to team up with other stakeholders related to the system because we feel that that gives us all an opportunity to affect change more quickly. Uh, these other stakeholders involve companies developing solutions to treat and recycle urine. It can also involve universities and research centers and also municipal governments. And actually, feel, we feel that municipal governments have quite, quite a significant role to play here in terms of creating mechanisms or creating policies that can incentivize this, this paradigm shift. So here on this slide, I'm showing you just um, three examples of, of partnerships for joint communication and, and, and promotion. The one on, on the left is an installation called the P-Bank, 
which is a concept for a public toilet installation that was developed by the Bauhaus University Weimar in Germany, together with Werkhaus Destinature, uh, and received funding from the German Federal Environment Foundation to be set up. The main idea here was to deploy very simple, very clear and, and appealing graphics to explain the nutrient cycle and to make it very easy and to make it a, a positive experience for people to be a part of this. So essentially, the act of peeing becomes a donation. You're, you're doing something good. Um, on the right, on the top, um, it's a temporary installation called The Place to Pee, which was conceived by the Belgium startup Hydrome, which is a spin-off of the University of Ghent. And this installation was placed in a, in a sports and leisure park in the city of Ghent in Belgium throughout the whole summer last year. And it served, um, on the one hand, to, to raise awareness about the benefits of, of recycling urine, um, but it also served as a pilot for, for large-scale testing of Hydrome's urine recycling technology. And what was interesting here was that um, this had a lot of support and funding from the municipal government of the of the city of Ghent, who did an amazing job as well as to promote um, this installation and, and the whole topic. And we're currently also working on a promotional video together with Buna Nexus. Sadly, it isn't ready yet. I would love to be able to show it here to you, but it's still work in progress. But um, it will be a video that shows a complete system already installed and in action from the collection of urine through our safe toilets and also our urinals all the way through to its treatment and and coming out as as the aurine um, fertilizer that Nadej showed a little bit earlier and at this point for more sort of the commercial side of things i hand back to to mark again thank you Christiane. um Speaking about the commercial side, I mean, this is a problem that many of you will face uh, with your innovations and solutions that the sanitation industry and the bathroom industry are very traditional. So besides the product and the communication we're driving, for us it's also important to have these lighthouse projects that are on one side lighthouse research projects, like for example, the OME in the Newcastle University, or Atelier Gardens at the Berlin Film Studios, which are research projects, but also have um, end users testing the product and we're getting feedback for all these kinds of installations uh, to also optimize the product and have it as a field test. Uh, speaking about field testing, if you can go to the next slide, it's not just test installations. We also have live installations, meanwhile, open and ongoing. So for example, the European Space Agency in Paris has their office building with safe toilets and the VUNA system that was presented earlier. The EPFL Lausanne, the same for part of the newly refurbished campus. And we also working on larger scale residential projects. For example, this is just one of the examples in the saint vincent de paul in Paris where it's going to be used in residential um, applications. And all these projects help us to really um, make safe accepted within the community. So whenever there is a project, we're happy to talk about it. We're happy to support in any way, because the more of these Lighthouse projects we get, the more acceptance the general topic gets and the more um, recognition. And I think this is the last slide. Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> so let me just stop sharing again. Not quite sure how I stopped um, sharing in Zoom. Great. Uh, I think if I think you. Someone else can take over. I think we can do that. Maybe. Ah, stop sharing. Um, I did. There so, we go. Here we go. Well, thank you both. <laughs> Thank you both so much. It's great to hear about uh, about the updates and and especially to hear all the places where um, where uh, these are being installed and um, and some of and some of your uh, you know intentions. Looking looking forward, um, we certainly look forward to uh, 
look forward to it coming uh, across the ocean here. So, um, so do we. <laughs> yes. Um, all right. Next, we're going to go um, to Cape Cod, Massachusetts, uh, in the United States, where uh, Earl Bernhardt and Hilda Menge will be presenting on Peapod Waterless Urinal, In Wall Urinal, and other urine diversion systems to reduce pollution on Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Uh, Hilda and Earl use a urine diverting composting toilet in their house and use the nutrients from their urine and their composted feces as fertilizer in their extensive food producing gardens and solar greenhouse. They have used composting toilets for 22 years and switched to a urine diverting composting toilet system designed by Abe Noe Hayes about eight years ago. This year, they also got started using um, systems developed by Rich Earth Institute to gain personal experience with them before promoting them to the general public. In the last eight years, they have recycled about uh, 1,600 gallons of urine to their food gardens, greenhouse, and landscape. In their gardens, they use only urine and shredded leaves for fertilizer. So uh, Hilda and Earl, welcome. And uh, I see your screen here and take it away. Thank you, Arthur. Thank you, Arthur. The uh, background of our work is uh, we worked at a new Alchemy Institute since the 1970s. And the purpose of that was to develop ecologically derived human support systems, energy, agriculture, aquaculture, housing, and landscapes. And during that time, we worked on food from outdoor gardens, food from indoor passive solar greenhouses, food from aquaculture and aquaponics, uh, energy efficient buildings and houses. And the last thing that ever is attempted by sustainability advocates is the safe recycling of nutrients from human waste. We call that the last frontier of sustainability. And we choose and design strategies that don't use fossil fuels and that operate on a small scale for individuals, families, and small groups. We think that that's the way you transform the whole world is at the, the local level and the lowest functional level uh, of society. So this is where we live. This is a close up of our Cape Cod, which is actually now an island since they made a um, canal between the mainland and the section of Massachusetts. And I'm gonna go first through all the problems that we have which is pollution. So that's our focus because we have to solve our uh, pollution problems. And uh, so that this talk will be mostly about that. You see all the bright green and that shows the pollution uh, on the coastal side. And we have a lot of pollution in our freshwater ponds as well. This is our town and we live somewhere near where you see the Air Force Base. Um, we have 14 estuaries, they're all polluted. And uh, it's a huge problem since we de depend on um, fishing and um, tourists. We have an excess nitrogen is issue and this speaks for itself. We have a phosphorus um, nutrient load issue and it's polluting our freshwater pond. Uh, Falmouth has 120 ponds, they're all polluted in various degrees. And it's mostly from human waste and, of course, fertilizers. Um, the solution that uh, the elected officials are coming up with in the state uh, is, of course, the, the one that's most known, which is sewers. And it's a big problem. It's a big cost. It has a lot of delays uh, built into it. And it's totally unsustainable um, in greenhouse gases and in energy consumption and it doesn't do anything cleaning the water. The, the effluent has already um, polluted our west water, west of Falmouth waters, and uh, the cost is unaffordable. Another problem that people don't realize uh, in the general public is that we only have about 135 gallons of waste a year per person. Most of it urine, only 15 gallons of uh, solid waste. And then we flush it with 6,000 gallons of water. And then we have another 6,000 gallons of other water, gray water per person per year. So now we have to treat 12,000 gallons of plus of uh, 
polluted water, uh, nutrient-rich water, and it uh, goes everywhere. So the cost of the, the solution that they've come up with is about $100,000 to $200,000 per parcel. And that's unaffordable. And we are very concerned about the sustainability of uh, the ecological justice and the economic justice of our population. And it's, it's unaffordable. And therefore, it has been very, very slow going. Um, we have worked on it for 90 years. We have about 2,000 houses in Falmouth on the sewer, and we probably spent half a billion. Um, and we think that no system that wastes nutrients, water, and energy is ever ecologically sustainable. So the next uh, best thing that uh, the state has come up with and that a lot of people are working on are IA system, Innovative Alternative Septic Systems. And they're basically mini sewers in residential backyards. And it's very possible that uh, as of next year, early next year, that the state will require homeowners to do this uh, within five years or the towns have to come up with another solution to this pollution problem. There is no time for this waste. There's no time to waste. There's another good time to waste. And with the global um, crisis we have on energy and on climate change and on uh, basically the whole phosphorus uh, decline, we have to keep going really fast. So to avoid this catastrophe, we have to totally transform the way we use energy, land, and resources to make a change for which there is no documented historic precedent. And that is what they said 12 years ago. By now, it's eight years. We have eight years to really totally transform how we work and live uh, on this globe. Recycling can wholly transform the way we manage human waste. And that is what we finally came up with, that all the other systems that they're proposing now are too expensive, too slow, and absolutely um, don't use any of the nutrients that are now produced by our waste. So we are looking into urine diversion options for the Cape. We want to have that uh, on a wide scale. And there are a number of urine diverting toilets and, and processes which are listed here. Um, they all have um, challenges, uh, unacceptable in certain ways and uh, slow or expensive in certain ways. And what we finally discovered and are working on is that if we can divert the male urine on the Cape, it reduces the nitrogen load into the groundwater by 40%. And the male urine is the cheapest and quickest and easiest way to divert the urine. And the public urinals, which are used over the entire world in public places, are unacceptable to most people. They do not want them in their private bathrooms. They're too big, they're too ugly, and they're messy. So we've discovered and started to develop a, a small concealed urinal that would be more acceptable. It's in the wall and is covered with a lid when it's not in use. We call it the pea pod. And this has been uh, in existence for about 10 years. Uh, Kim Nace, the rich earth person, has one in her house and has for eight years. It's on the right-hand corner there. And it's a little container, little door in the, in the wall that you use and then close again. And our design is to have this uh, in-wall urinal uh, with a one-way valve at the bottom that lets urine down into the uh, storage, but doesn't let uh, odors up. And we are developing this with engineers, and we intend to have it uh, develop to produce it commercially by next year. Uh, it has no odors. It has no splashing on the floor. It's reliable. It's low cost. It's low tech. It's low maintenance. It does not use water. Does not use energy and recovers all the urine nutrients. It is socially acceptable because it's familiar. People are familiar with urinals and uh, they can accept the idea of them. So this doesn't exist anywhere on the market in the world at the moment. Uh, we have a patent pending on it and we're going to have it produced and tested out on the Cape, preferably starting next year uh, in 2023. This is 
So we so on the Cape, this is all unfamiliar, of course. Um, we are now distributing the um, the little cubies that um, which Earth has developed as a very first stage, since we don't have the peapod yet. And people are coming and picking them up and getting very excited about this whole idea. Um, in the long term, we have to uh, get people installing these uh, urine tanks. So our plan is to have different forms of urine diverting toilets, putting the urine into storage tanks at each house under the ground, and then a service comes and pumps them out. And the three ways we can use them and treat them and process them is to send them to a sewer that's existing. That's the quickest and easiest uh, and is existing now. The second solution is to put them through a pasteurizer developed by Rich Earth and then truck it off to farms uh, where they're used for agriculture. And our third idea is to put the urine into uh, commercially available uh, composters, which are automatic and are continuous and mixed with other materials and produce a safe uh, fertilizer compact uh, product. So going to the sewers is not ideal because we lose all our nutrients, but it's good intermittent because we have to, um, we can do it immediately. So if we have either cubies or inval urinals, we have a place for that urine to go immediately. So we won't be held up for years to have something else developed. Um, we are really interested that we heard finally somebody doing something about composting with urine, and we would like to do that in an in-vessel composter where it's all automated. We have a lot of um, landscape um, debris on the cave. We have a lot of food waste on the cave, and combine that with urine might become a really good uh, composting fertilizer. So when you do the numbers and you find you find the costs, the important part here is the black uh, chart. So sewers on the Cape cost anywhere from three to four hundred dollars to remove a pound of nitrogen. These little septic systems in the backyard cost two hundred to eight hundred dollars per pound. Incinerating toilets, which are a very uh, attractive idea, uh, can eliminate the urine uh, for sixty dollars a pound. The pea pods we estimate would eliminate the urine for fifty dollars per uh, pound, dollars per pound. And Brattleboro uh, Rich Earth has had uh, reports that it suggests you can uh, recycle uh, the urine for $35 a pound. So this uh, pea pod, we see that as uh, the best way to clean uh, the pollution, water pollution on the Cape, and also then have the nutrients that we can recycle. Since we're using a lot of synthetic fertilizers on the Cape, we have a lot of golf courses, we have a lot of um, green spaces that could use it. And uh, we would like to see the pea pod be one of the solutions that could be ap uh, applied immediately. And the, the reason that the, the immediacy is, is so, so uh, important is because the pollution is getting worse by the year. So these are uh, references and links that is in our show that you can get later to the various uh, components and uh, companies. So stay tuned, we'll keep you informed when the urinal becomes available. If anybody's interested, let us know. Um, the more interest, the easier it is for us to get the funding to get to the next phase. All righty. Well, thank you so much, Hilda and Earl. That's, uh, that's really exciting. And I think particularly thinking about uh, um, the, the residential setting and and uh, what what options um, uh, what options uh, might be available soon. Um, um, let's see. We're going to move on again. If you have questions, put them in the chat. Um, I'm keeping track of them, and uh, we'll we'll um, we'll revisit some of them, um, even if they have been answered, just so everyone everyone can hear some some of the interesting questions um, uh, after the end of each of the presentations. Um, so our next presentation is going to be from Jason Cass. Jason uh, will be presenting on urine diverting toilet design. Jason is the founder and president of Toilets for People, a social, a social business created in 2012 that provides affordable, 
waterless, sustainable, and hygienic toilet solutions. Toilets for People serves the private off-grid homeowner market, as well as organizations working in international development and disaster relief that are serving people living in locations where pit latrines, above ground vault latrines, flush toilets, and chemical porta potties fail. Jason, welcome, and uh, you can share your screen. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes. And you can see me okay? Indeed. I'm assuming yes. Okay, great. All right, well, thank you for that intro. I am here at uh, Toilets for People TFP headquarters in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, I'm here with Sarah Zelani, who's our Director of Communications, uh, and also behind the camera. Uh, we have our, our shop dog here, Daphne. We hopefully won't make, a, make any noise. Um, so, uh, yeah, I just wanted to say, so we got our start 10 years ago as an NGO doing work, uh, doing international development work. And uh, five years ago, we created a for-profit um, affiliate that makes uh, composting toilets, composting toilets and urination fixtures for the, for the domestic market in the U.S. and also uh, international group disaster relief. So I'm gonna do a quick tour of the TFP shop, and then we'll come back here and talk about some of our urination diversion techniques. Um, okay, so um, here is our display area of all of our products. We make the toilets out of uh, high density polyethylene plastic. Uh, we also have do-it-yourself DIY versions of all of our toilets using all off-the-shelf components, and those are made of wood. So these are, you know, that people uh, basically do the, the cutting themselves, we provide the plans and the inner components. Um, over here, this is our little desk office area. It's a small shop, so this is gonna be a quick tour. Uh, this is where we keep all of our sheet goods, which we use to make the toilets. Um, it's a marine grade plastic, uh, recycled, and um, it's very easy to work with and, and very water resistant. This is our CNC machine, which does all the hard work of cutting the sheet to specification. Dustin Peabody is our director of fabrication. He's not here right now, but he takes our concepts and makes them happen in the digital realm. Um, so getting back to our, our product line, and I'll start out with our mail urinal. Um, and just to show you the, the uh, development where it started, this is a prototype that we did in Haiti back in 2017 um, at a school which, you know, the kids needed urinals, mostly both the boys and the girls. And um, this is a urinal we made out of, uh, you know, discarded uh, water container. We cut off the top, made it into a filter, poked holes in it, um, found a water bottle, cut it, made it into a, you know, kind of like a fern co sort of reducing valve. There's our, our you know, wire to use as a clamp and then just some hose that was around. Um, so that's a very affordable $1 urinal in Haiti. This is an example of the urinals that we sell, which is, it's like a porta potty urinal that people are probably familiar with. We have a screen that's bolted with uh, rubber washers. So there's no leakage right into the, uh, the unit itself. It's removable, which is nice. So you can clean it very readily. And this is something we designed for that purpose because sometimes people throw things into urinals that they should not. Um, here's uh, an, sort of an interface to get it into this container. And this is an adjustable height. So that, that's a very convenient, you know, potentially in-home urinal for someone. The next, we're gonna move over to our pee toilet, which is designed for women, but men can use it too. Super simple. The secret sauce here is this 10 inch funnel, which is very widely available. And it has a little screen that we found that fits perfectly right in there. And it goes right into the container. Um, and this sets up here, you know, for when you need to take this out and service it. The other new thing about this design is that if you wanted to do direct discharge into a container that happens to be outside, you put in that adapter and now you have a way to discharge it to a remote location. So that's our pee toilet. We do provide bucket toilets because a lot of people like bucket toilets. Um, so this is, as you might imagine, a very standard little unit. It's you know got the right height so you can tap it if you need to for odor control. 
there is a ventilation system option with this one in the back here. And you'll see the ventilation system we developed is all common for all of our units. Um, in front here, you'll see this is like a little squatty potty. It also is helpful for kids to be able to sit up on the toilet. That's standard on all of our products. We love this the squatty potty notion. Uh, this is our bucket plus, which is a really nice option as a step up from the bucket toilet because it does have that urine diversion. It's got the same squatty potty. Urine gets diverted into this container or it can also be diverted outside. Um, and I'll talk about the, the urine diversion interface last. We'll just kind of set it up there. This is also common for all of our units. And then there is our composting toilet, which is our signature product. And the way this works very simply is that there's a drum inside. I'll take the urine diversion interface is always removable, so it can be serviced very easily. If anything were to clog, it would be this point right here. If there's any buildup of salts or 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 um, you know precipitates from the urine, but it's very easy to you know once a year, twice a year, it has a filter here to keep any debris out of it, and um, here you can see that ventilation unit I described earlier, super simple computer fan with an adapter, plugs into the wall, it could run off a solar panel. So the way this works, you poop in the back, you pee in the front, um, you give the toilet a spin, just like a backyard composter once a day. You spin it to the left, it's got a flap door inside, and that's just gonna mix the waste around. It's gonna, it's gonna accelerate that thing. And um, eventually that's gonna fill up. You spin it the other way to the right, and some of the waste that's in the drum is gonna fall out and go into a container underneath. And then it can be removed and put on an exterior compost pile for additional composting. Um, so that is uh, the product that I want here. The urine gets diverted out into a container, which is like a little sidecar and it's easily serviced that way or this can discharge directly to a remote collection location. And yeah, so just to give a few um, quick thoughts about um, where we, how we got to where we are. Um, we had um, a situation in Vermont where I, this is back in 2005, where I did not have the ability to put in a septic system where the uh, cabin was and I needed some kind of a solution and the composting toilet that I purchased after a lot of research was the Sunmar, which has a lot of great attributes, but it didn't have urine diversion. So thinking back, I didn't prioritize urine diversion at that time, and it ended up being a problem. Um, and um, so, uh, yeah, that was what kicked off the idea of, of doing our own toilet and developing our own toilet. and. Um, but we started out with the idea that the, the sort of the, a lot of the design of the Sunmar is, is really thoughtful. And in particular, the size of the, in, of the interface they use. The interface they use is similarly black. It does not have a urine diversion front, but the shape of it is oval, but overall it, it's got a, a similar kind of um, area for pooping. Let's put it that way. So there's a, it's just like a big rectangle. So in developing this interface, um, we also looked at other compost and toilets that do, that do have urine diversion. And we found that there's a certain depth here. And we found that like, you know, like five and a half inches seems to be the sweet spot of minimizing splash. But we also wanted to have it not be so deep that it's gonna make the toilet super high. Because we want you to, we want to be able to have the sitting area of the toilet will be 19 inches maximum. So the filter here keeps any large debris. And we went through a bunch of general, you know, iterations of this design to make sure this works perfectly. This urine diversion, some of the lessons learned is we used a metal nipple at first, which got a lot more um, deposition on it and it occluded the area much more readily within like a year or two. But we're using IBC, it, you know, the, it, it doesn't have that problem as much. The other 
thing that we prioritize is we, we want to make the maintenance as easy as possible with our toilets. So not to have um, any kind of blockages is, is critical. So which is why we oversized the, the tubing that we used. Initially, we we're using tubing that was maybe three quarter inches and we bumped it up to an inch. And then now we're at an inch and a quarter. And we find that that's sort of the sweet spot. It's a very readily available hose, easy to work with will not clog up because it's so much bigger than this. So this is the only point that needs to you keep an eye on from year to year. Um, the other innovations we had is how the, uh, having it be removable. So many urine um, diversion interfaces are not removable or there's, there's no way to clean out the area that um, you're peeing into. And once something gets in there, whether it's debris or some foreign object, uh, you can't get that. You can't clean it. You'd have to replace the whole thing. So this, that's, that was the motivation for making it the way we did. And that's really a lot of the lessons came from working in the developing world where kids would, you know, or that happens everywhere, but especially at schools where kids, you know, will throw toys or rocks or anything into the toilet that, you know, that, that just in a playful way. But if you can't clean it really easily, then it becomes unusable. And that it's just a widespread problem in the developing world where it's, it's not necessarily the design of the toilet or the look of it, it's, it's the ability to maintain it that, uh, that people fall short on. And um, so that, that's the, the, the big lesson for, you know, when we go overseas um, and then come back, we share lessons here and bring them to other countries and then you know, in the a lot of you know innovations are developed there in, in partnership with the local communities, and then we bring those innovations back and share them widely. So, I want to thank you all for your attention and the opportunity to talk about urine diverting toilets. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jason. Great to uh, get to see your space a little bit and uh, and get to have an explanation of of all the different things you've made. So. That is really excellent. Um, all right. So uh, again, if you have questions for Jason, throw them in the chat, um, and uh, we'll 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 visit some uh, for everyone, and also um, So you are muted. We can't hear you. You are muted, yes. <laughs> I am muted. Sorry about yes. that. Uh, I don't know when I was muted from, but Robert Cosette will be presenting uh, Enter the Nitrogen Cycle with the Oreas Solar Dripper. Robert is an engineer and eco-entrepreneur born in Quebec and living in France, uh, inventor of the Oreas solar dripper. His tests have demonstrated the efficiency of fertilizing with urine. So take it away, Robert. Thanks. Okay, thank you, everybody. Uh, so um, I'm going to share my screen. If I'm able to get to the button, uh, this is it. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. You can see my screen and you can see. It. So um, thank you everyone, uh, especially the Richard Institute for organizing uh, this uh, interesting meeting. I will present to you the uh, solution I've developed for uh, collection and application of urine in France, uh, in Annecy. And I've, um, I've uh, already um, used about uh, three tons of urine in uh, six years, and uh, it worked uh, very, very well. I was very surprised with the uh, result. So as everyone knows, climate change uh, caused a big problem uh, of uh, drought and uh, uh, lack of water uh, during summer. And uh, it's a, a big problem that uh, we use flush toilets to, to, to drain uh, 250 milliliters of urine using eight liters of water. So it's a, it's a clear nonsense. Uh, as other um, uh, people have uh, showed, uh, we have a big problem with over fertilization of our uh, groundwater. 
And this is examples uh, we have in NFT, which are uh, in the French Alps. <laughs> we have a very clean environment, but we cannot say that the, the river downward is uh, clean. And uh, alga and uh, uh, bloom of eutrophication uh, takes place even in, uh, in the French Alps. Uh, there will be also another big problem is the phosphorus uh, peak uh, we, we are about to reach, and we will lack uh, phosphorus uh, for uh, agriculture in uh, maybe 20 years or 30 years, or I don't know. We manufacture um, urea from gas while we pollute our rivers with our natural urea. So. Uh, we are collecting one cents with um, uh, conventional uh, toilets, flush toilets, uh, and this has to stop. Uh, and sewage plants uh, have uh, many failures. Uh, uh, for example, in Paris, the largest sewage uh, treatment plant uh, uh, burned uh, a couple of years ago, and for a couple of uh, days and or weeks, uh, uh, the stuff of the uh, Two million people were going uh, was going to the sand uh, and polluting uh, like everywhere in the world. So we are not using the proper tools with flush uh, toilets, and I am not happy. <laughs> I am not happy. And um, we we can try to find other solutions. So I worked in uh, the field of. Um, collecting and applying on a do-it-yourself uh, solution. So this is a, uh, urine is a claim to be a good source of uh, fertilizer. I read the uh, publication from uh, World Health Organization, the, the book from the Renaud de Lose, uh, uh, and uh, the excellent publication from the uh, uh, SEE in uh, Sweden, and um, those publications were saying uh, urine was a good fertilizer. So I, I'm the designer of the uh, solar dripper, which is a, a drip irrigation system. And uh, one day I figured I had to try uh, this uh, fantastic fertilizer. So uh, to collect it, I, this year I created the, the uh, Aria's urinet, which is a funnel that screws on a bulb. It's a conventional uh, soft ring bulb with a 28 millimeter thread. So you just screw this on the bulb, and a woman or man can use it uh, uh, standing or uh, sitting. And uh, it's easy to clean, it's personal. So uh, there are no cross contamination like uh, with all the, the diversion seats uh, that you see up in. So uh, nobody will go into this uh, funnel, and there will no be uh, there will never be uh, pieces uh, in this bottle. So it, it prevents uh, cross contamination. Uh, at home, it is very easy to install. It takes a minute. Uh, you can keep your traditional uh, flush, flush toilet for the big uh, job and uh, can collect your urine just with this system. So I have this, uh, for example, uh, at home, it's uh, the bucket, a simple bucket with the uh, bottle. This one is filled, it will go to the garden uh, tonight. And this one is being used. If I have visitors, uh, we also use uh, the, the, the system and visitors would use a clean urine from my wall, connect to a clean bottle and do their job. And, uh, they wash their hand, they, they, they wash their urine net, and we can throw it uh, easily in the washing machine, uh, either the laundry machine or the dishwasher machine. Uh, in hospital, it can be uh, disinfected with uh, boiling water or um, alcohol. Uh, if there's a higher risk of pathogen uh, in hospital, uh, it can still be used. So uh, people that are using dry toilet uh, can uh, use it in a sitting position. And the trick is to design the dry toilet with an open uh, seat. So if you have an open seat, you can sit and align manually the uh, collector. 
so that uh, you collect your urine and you do the other thing uh, on the back <laughs> as you did before. So um, to apply the urine after you've collected without cross contamination, which is a key factor to permit using it in your garden and even for uh, crop the COE. So um, you simply dilute urine and uh, apply it with the uh, power gripper, which is the uh, uh, a drip irrigation system that uh, provides the water into the ground. So we are allowed in Europe to apply up to uh, 17 grams per, per meter per year. This is the standard for uh, agriculture. And uh, it represents about two to three liters of urine per square meter per year. So you do apply it in small Dogs that are daily doses that you spread on a surface that could be of uh, around 400 uh, square meters. And it works super well. <laughs> so uh, I have uh, tested this uh, for tomatoes and I, I reach uh, a higher uh, sugar content with my tomatoes uh, compared to conventional uh, fertilizer. So uh, uh, 20 years ago, I was using. Uh, chemical fertilizer without knowing that I was a good producer of uh, fertilizer. So I, I tested it with uh, almost anything that you can eat. And uh, for corn, it was uh, very uh, uh, spectacular also. It worked very, very well. So each bowl has a, a, a fixed quantity of uh, urine and the application is very precise. With uh, sunflowers, uh, we had a <laughs> very good success too. Uh, they grew uh, more than uh, four meters tall, and uh, well, it was a lot of fun to, to do this. Uh, for squash, uh, we had very good uh, squash, either in quantity and quality of squash. And uh, it can be used indoor as well. So you can apply urine with the solar ripple because it, it uh, sends the urine directly into the soil without odor. Uh, my tomatoes were tasted in the Stockholm uh, World uh, Water Week back in uh, 2019. And uh, about 40 people or about 40 to 50 people uh, tested my uh, my tomatoes knowing that they were fertilized with urine and no one died, no one got sick and uh, they had a lot of fun to, to try that. Uh, during winter and fall, since my garden doesn't need the uh, fertilizing, I just spread uh, uh, on a daily basis the extra amount of urine so that uh, I fertilize uh, uh, conifers or hollies. And uh, uh, it's a matter of staying under the over fertilization uh, uh, ratio that, with the, that maintains the, the, the system to be uh, usable. So to enter the nitrogen cycle, it's very easy to save 80% of the nitrogen that goes that would go to the river. So uh, and all of our rivers can be clean of nitrogen if everyone takes care uh, of its uh, own nitrogen and spread it properly, just working with urine, which is very easy compared to the PP. So uh, the, the key factor for the uh, solar gripper to work so well is the uh, ability to uh, leave um, large particles to go into the regulator because it, it is not foggy compared to regular or standard uh, watering system. Uh, the, the standard watering system needs a filtration of at least a, a 0.2 millimeter uh, diameter screen and the solar gripper permits two millimeter size particle to flow through. And uh, by uh, applying just into the ground at the center of the root, uh, it prevents contact from edible parts. So you, you have a reduction of the uh, risk of a, a factor by a hundred to a million times less according to the World Health Organization. So this is an available solution. It's uh, it's sold uh, 
on the single units like this, it's already got five. So you give me five, you got one. And if you want 28, uh, it costs uh, $99. And we now can ship in the US and everywhere in the world. The Aria's Urinet are also in pre-production. They are now made in 3D printing. And those are a bit expensive to manufacture for now. They are at $25 each. And uh, once we put this in uh, mass production in an injection mold, it will be around uh, five dollars. So we you can already apply uh, orders uh, for for this. So thank you for for your attention. All right. Thank you, Robert. It's great to hear about your uh, your experiences and uh, especially you know being able to give give people a a, a way to uh, to do this in their own home uh, immediately and have a have a good solution. So thanks thanks a bunch. All right, uh, I'm going to plow right along because we're um, trying to uh, make sure we save enough time to have a little bit of a break before the next session. Uh, so our next. And the last um, presentation in this um, in this section uh, will be from Lata Kristoferich, uh, presenting on uh, open toilet open design toilet mold, a toilet revolution for the bottom of the pyramid. Lata is a trained architect working at EOS Next since 2020 as a project manager in the social and sustainable design department. Uh, since 2021, she operates as managing director. Before joining EOS Next, Lata was working on projects in the field of design and architecture for EOS Design. Lata was part of the design team working on the Reinvent the Toilet Challenge since 2016 as a project leader and as project manager for various exhibition contributions, such as the International Architecture Exhibition La Benale de Venezia 2016, uh, the Vienna Benale in 2019 and the Triennal de Milano, sorry for my pronunciation, 2019, for which EOS received the Black Bee Award for the exhibition, Circular Flows, The Toilet Revolution. Welcome, Lata, and um, take it away. Hi, thanks. Um, I tried to share my screen and, and uh, make this real quick so that everyone can enjoy a break. Um, I hope you can all see my screen now. Yes, we can. Um, yeah, so as, as Robert was explaining a lot about enabling people to collect urine, we are trying to do the same with, with the project that we developed for the bottom of the pyramid. Um, Christiane explained perfectly how we um, divert urine using our urine trap technology that is um, invisible to the user. I think this is key to a great user experience. So we try to bring this to the bottom of the pyramid. Um, as you see here, it's a, it's a squat toilet typology, a dry toilet that can be produced locally using sheet metal and concrete. So we really try to come up with a, with a toilet that is as simple as possible to enable craftspeople around the world on one hand to start their own business and on the other hand to, to enable people to collect urine to then produce fertilizer locally. Um, I think this is this is what Christiane has shown and what as you are all experts I'm, I'm very positive that you're aware of what we are specialized in. So this is our urine trap technology that we are applying to a squat pan, um, which consists well, the, the project consists mainly on a, on a manual that is open source so everybody can download it for free. Um, and with, the, with this template, you are able to produce a metal mold that, that you then use to cast um, a squat pan that is then being integrated in a slab. Um, you divert urine by basically connecting it to, to urine piping and, and the dry material falls into a slab or into a pit. So this is the sheet metal template. We have been field testing this in South Africa in 2020 and um, engaged in a field test in Nepal since um, 2021. It's a very rural setting, um, four hours drive from Kathmandu, um, a community of farmers that were introduced to urine diversion. Um, yeah, sorry. I'll... So this is the village. It's a, it's a community of farmers. 
Um, they were using Pitlet genes before. We um, did a, a project where we, where we together with local craftspeople um, improved the, the, the mold in a way so that it can be easily um, removable from the dried concrete. These are some images from the production. On the right side, you see images of, um, of the reinforcement of the slab where they use bamboo. Um, yeah, after uh, over a period of, of uh, three months, we were able to then come up with the perfect geometry. Um, 10 of these squat pans have been produced for this community. They're integrated in superstructures. Here you see um, a double vault pit latrine where, where the, where the prior to the squad pan being integrated. Um, yeah, and then some impressions from the local community. So on the left, on the left image, you see one of the, one of the toilet buildings, um, really basic ways of collecting urine with uh, funnels, jerry cans and ping pong balls. I'm sure you're all <laughs> aware of these technologies um, or solutions. I think one thing that, that was a big improvement um, was the integration of, uh, of anal cleansing. So in the middle, on the left image in the middle, you see the, the anal cleansing area. The, the water um, is actually being drained to the, to the ground and uh, the two blue doors are the access to the, to the, um, to the pits in a way that, that need to be cleaned out in a six month cycle. Um, fertilizer is applied through drip irrigation um, and is used uh, on, on uh, cauliflower plants and garlic and orange trees. And for this community, it's, it's really a huge impact because they are so off, um, they are so off and so remotely located that buying fertilizer is extremely cheap. So without urine diversion, they wouldn't be, they, they wouldn't have the possibility to really push their harvest. Um, as they managed to during this harvest season. Um, yeah, here you see a few of, of the images of, of, um, of the community again, the orange trees, and on the right side, a very recent one where you, where you really see the trees in full bloom and with, with lots of orange fruits. Um, there's a project report. It was a, a project that we collaborated on with, uh, with Erbach and uh, Swiss Helvetas. Um, whoever is interested in, in um, learning more about the project, please feel free to get in touch with me. Um, another really big um, milestone in this project was an intensive um, introduction to urine diversion and safe handling of urine and, fe and fecal matter. This was done in the, in the local community center um, by a local NGO. So, I think in comparison to, to, to the work that we did with, um, with Laufen on developing the safe toilet, this was a totally different approach because we really needed to rely on people where we wouldn't understand the, the level of training. So it was a lot of going back and forth and the outcome is really, is, is really great. So currently we are applying for, um, for projects within the UNHCR context. We're trying to um, implement hundreds of these squat pans in refugee camps in, in Central Africa. Yeah, this is, this is a short update on, on what we are doing in the field of urine diversion. Of course, there are several other projects. We, we have been engaged with a company in South Africa um, with the Enviroswan, they are specialized in urine diversion. So they are also now having one of our urine trap typology toilets um, in, their, in their portfolio. So thanks, um, thanks for, for organizing this event. It's really, it's, it's a pleasure meeting all of you and, um, and understanding that there are lots of, of people with, a, with this very special interest out there. Yes, thank you so much. That's really, really neat to see. Um, and especially, you know, that need to see that uh, technology being used in so, so many different ways. Uh, and and in lots of different types of places, so that's very exciting. Um, well, we don't. Uh, I think I don't have time to um, uh, do questions um, in person. But again, if you do have questions for any of the presenters from this time, um, there have been a bunch of questions and conversations happening in the chat, and that's great. Um, and I think we will be able to. Um, uh, you know, post post some questions and answers afterwards as well. 
um, for people who um, aren't able to kind of navigate the chat in real time. Um, but please, um, you know, um, ask questions and for presenters, if you have a chance to look, uh, look for questions for you and, and, uh, and give some answers, uh, then that would be really fantastic. So thank you all so much. This was really great. Um, uh, we'll take a, a little bit um, of a break and uh, I'll pass it back to Julia just now and then we'll take a break. Thanks so much.